recording this inside today because it is rainy and muddy out there and I don't think that I can record it outside. So this is what I'm doing. I apologize if my voice craps out on us because it's still not working very well after I got sick. But it's doing a lot better than it was. So, first of all, I noticed that I have five subscribers on my channel. That is so amazing. Thank you so much. You guys rock. Secondly, I have been hatching out some of my ladies' eggs. And their chicks are the cutest little nuggets I've ever seen. I'm excited to see how they feather out. Their mommy is a Rhode Island Red Easter Egger mix that I hatched out during the summer. And their daddy was a Cuckoo Moran. It was one of the free chicks that McMurray Hatchery sent. So it was either a Barn Rock or a Cuckoo Moran's, but everybody says it's Moran's. So I don't know how they can tell the two apart. Honestly, they look exactly the same. The only thing somebody pointed out to me is that Moran's have white legs and barred rocks tend to have yellow legs and my rooster had white legs so okay i'm gonna say it's a moran's i don't have it anymore because it was trying to kill my bantam chicken so i had to get rid of him but he's living very happily with a lot of ladies at another house with another flock and i have some of his babies they look like they will be barred like their daddy and they look like they'll have they'll be boys because they've got white dots on their heads and they're really big white dots and usually with the dad's breed that means that they will be boys and they will be barred and usually if they have like a little hint of a spot they'll be girls I'm sorry my cat is puking in the background you can probably hear him uh, oh my goodness okay where was I <laughs> oh so girls will have a little faint of a hint of a spot but um, boys have a really big huge spot and they end up barred and I don't know if it's like true with these chicks that I have because they are mixed but they both have great big spots on their heads they both look exactly like their daddy, with the exception of they have their mom's Easter egg or what is it, a cushion comb or a rose comb? They have the squishy. They have the little squishy combs, like their mommy. So cute. I have six more eggs in the incubator that should be hatching soon, but when I got the chick out of the incubator, and I kind of bonked the eggs. They felt really light, which usually means there's not a lot of liquid in there, which usually means that they're not alive. So, I don't know. I'm trying not to bonk them or bother them too much because you're supposed to keep the incubator closed or it like shrink wraps the babies in there and kills them because they don't have enough humidity. Maybe I'll do a whole video about all of that stuff, but I feel like they're not alive. I feel like they're dead, and that makes me sad, but I'm still keeping up the hope in my heart that they'll hatch, and I'm keeping up the hope in my heart that they won't be stinking boys, because honestly, you can only keep one rooster, and if these roosters are anything like their daddy, I won't be able to keep them because they will be attacking my lady, my little mother hen. She's a tiny little bantam and she'll pick a fight with anybody. It's her own dang fault. Anyway, I'm getting extremely off topic here. Um, <laughs> so keep your fingers crossed. There'll be ladybirds so that I can keep them and get more eggs. We like eggs. Also, because they have the blue egg gene from their mom and they have the dark brown egg gene from their dad. They'll probably be these really beautiful olive colored eggs. I do have olive colored eggs already. I don't know why I'm so excited about these, but they're supposed to be F2 green eggs, which is like a color of olive green that's just, it's beautiful, okay? 
Google it. It's amazing. Just put your good vibes out there, okay? We need our good hen vibes. We need our hatching vibes that they're actually alive. And they're not just sacks of air and dead chicks in there. Just just put your positive vibes out there and cross all your fingers and toes that they will hatch and they will be girls. Because I really want this, okay? We got this. We can do this. <laughs> New topic. I had mentioned before in a video how much I like to learn about the weird mating habits of different animals around the world. And I thought that for this video, I would tell you about a few of my favorite ones. They're not favorites, they're just, I think they're the weirdest. I talked about the angler fish and the eagle in my last video, so I'm not going to talk about those in this video. So if you're curious about the oddities of the mating rituals of the angler fish, you should watch my other video. I don't know what other video it is. And respectable, uh, a good YouTube channel would link their other video down below, but I'm far too lazy for that. So I'm going to let you use the energy to go do that and look it up because sometimes the quest for knowledge, the quest for your thing that you're looking for is far more enjoyable than the thing you actually Get. I'm trying to make a I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Just ignore me. Okay. Anyway, so this video might be just a tiny, teeny little bit graphic. Uh just because we're talking about mating and copulation and body parts falling off. So um parental discretion would be advised. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Uh, let me see. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Ha! There you go. Probably don't let your kids listen to this if you are not wanting them to hear weird stories. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the Argona octopus. They are so stinking cute. They have their eight little octopus legs and they live in these teeny shells. If I can find a picture of one, I'll show you. But I kind of am worried about copyright laws. I don't know how things work. I don't I don't know how this YouTube -y thing works, but I know that a lot of people complain about like, oh copyright. Copyright striking. I don't know what bad happens if you get copyright stricted, striked. If you're struck down by the copyright, I don't want any of that nonsense. I just want to stay away from it. So I'm kind of afraid to show like pictures or videos or whatever. But maybe gradually as I start doing more videos, I'll just like, I'll warm my way into it. And it'll happen. And the video will be more interesting that way. Okay? Just give me time. I'm, I'm a slow mover. I'm not one of these people who just jump into a nice cold lake just willy-nilly. I got off topic again. I do that a lot. Sorry. Um, let's see. What are we talking about here? Oh, they're so stinking cute. Okay, look them up. Google them. It's Argonaut Octopus. I might be pronouncing it wrong, but you can figure it out. Google's very smart. It corrects all your spelling. I'm a terrible speller. I know this. So when a male Argonaut wants to mate with a female Argonaut, he takes his penis off and throws it at her. His penis is detachable and it can swim. So it zooms up to the lady in question and says, well, hello there, beautiful, and attaches to her to give her the sperm. It clamps onto her and then she carries it around for a while until she gets tired of it and then she throws it away. I wonder if the penis has an orgasm and if it does, does the Argonaut feel it or does just the penis feel it? How often does it orgasm if it does? Because it's like it's attached for a long time. These are questions that I've had. I've googled them and I haven't found any information. I would assume that no, no orgasm happens but it would be cool if there was. Could you imagine if people mated like that? <laughs> I mean, like, most women I have talked to, including myself, I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> we all hate those random penis pics that 
men like to send? Why do they even send those? I don't understand it. Can you imagine though, if people did it that way, you're just, you're on your way to work or whatever, and all of a sudden a penis flies through your car window out of nowhere, it would give a whole new meaning to snakes on a plane. That movie would be so different if we were like the Argonaut. Just saying. Then there's the banana slug, also known as the nibbler. He has a penis that's almost as long as the length of its entire body. Sometimes if a banana slug chooses a mate that's not the proper size for its gigantic penis, it ends up getting stuck in the other slug after mating. It's okay though, because it doesn't stay stuck for very long. The smaller slug always ends up chewing the bigger slug's penis right off and it goes about its business like nothing of significance happened. The other slug that lost its penis, I tried to research if they grow these back and I can't find anything about it. So, if you could comment down below please and tell me if the banana slug grows its penis back after it's been chewed off by its mate, that would be great. I would appreciate it. Or, I know that the banana slugs, they're both male and female, so maybe the slugs that have had their penises chewed off, they're just female from then on. Do you think they're just the female slugs? I don't know. These are weird questions that I have. I would like them to be answered. I'm curious. Curious minds want to know. I wonder if that's why it's called the nibbler. In Australia, there is this adorable little marsupial called the Antic Antichinus. Antichinus? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, but I know it looks kind of like a mouse. It's really super cute. It's got these little rounded ears and it's got like this very bristly fur. It's just, it's really cute. So this little guy only has three weeks during his lifetime to mate and he definitely, definitely takes advantage of it. Basically what happens is he's got like this huge spike in testosterone and like something happens with the cortisol. I don't know, I don't understand it entirely, but it the, the chemicals in his body makes him want to mate first and foremost and they also kind of break down his body. I, I don't know. You should look it up. Seriously. It's fun to learn things on your own. It's fun to look things up. It's fun to go to the library and read an actual book instead of Googling it. Oh my gosh. You should do that because libraries are really fun. Remember when you were a kid and you used to, well, I'm older than probably most of you. But when I was a kid, <laughs> we would go to the library and it was be like all the time they were like redecorating and putting up different art and it was just a really awesome place to go, I'm telling you. Um, so you should go to the library and be like, librarian, I don't understand the Dewey Decimal System because I'm a millennial. Can you please point me in the direction of the book that contains the marsupial that that is weird with its mating and you can tell me. I got off topic again. This is the last time. <laughs> it doesn't sleep, it doesn't eat, it doesn't drink. It just runs around the desert looking for any lady it can find. Sometimes he mates with a female for up to 14 hours straight. Before moving on to the next one, he basically keeps going that way until his internal organs explode and his body falls apart. The males don't survive mating season, but I think they must die happy and satisfied. I think, I mean, I would hope so because they like, they go blind, their hair falls out, their bodies literally fall apart because they're mating so vigorously. It kind of gives a whole new meaning to the saying he loved her to death. A queen honeybee has only one mating season too, so it's kind of like the marsupial guy that way. Uh, apparently, the males all live in one place 
and that's where a young queen flies when she's ready to mate. The males all take turns mating with her while they're flying. While I think it would probably be really fun to do it mid-flight, it probably isn't all rainbows and sunshine for the males because his, um, what do you call it? A bee's penis. It's called something. It's a very long, weird name. I think it starts with an E. Anyway, a bee's penis. I don't know what it's called. Um, after ejaculating, his apparatus rips out of his body, splitting open his abdomen, killing him instantly. On rare occasions, the male will survive, but the other males will kill him and kick him out of their nest because he's no longer a useful, productive male. I feel like that should have been the plot to B movie. Okay, because like, how dramatic and epic would a B movie be if the male B were like, I thought my life was gonna mean something, add up to something, all I did was meet a pretty lady, all of a sudden my life turned upside down, and I, you know, was ripped in half practically, and then I healed, I overcame, and then I went back home, and my brothers kicked me out, and tried to kill me, and they thought I was dead, and then I, you know, went through all these trials and tribulations, and I came back stronger and better than ever. That should have been the plot to be a movie. I'm glad I'm not a porcupine though, because when the females are ready to mate, the males throw their urine at them. Can you imagine how many spare outfits and wet wipes we would have to carry with us if people did that? Like, you're off to a job interview or something and you pass this guy at the bus stop and he thinks you're quite good looking and then all of a sudden, you're drenched in urine and you're like, well, great. Now I have to go to this job interview all covered in urine and then you get to the job interview and it's this sleazy boss guy and he throws his urine at you. Can you imagine just how many times a day would a woman get urine thrown at her? I'm curious about this. That's not pleasant sounding to me, so let's, uh, let's keep it urine free, please. Then there's the clownfish. And I believe the clownfish are the fish that are in Finding Nemo. I think Nemo and his dad are clownfish. And it's interesting to me that there is no mother fish in that story. And I, I realize at the beginning of Finding Nemo, the mom is there and then she's not. And I guess maybe she died or got eaten or something. I don't know. But I find it very interesting that the dad and Nemo are both male. Because in real life, clownfish are all born male. Female clownfish, they must be made. So what they do is they first hatch their beginning life. They're at the bottom of the ladder, okay? And then they learn more stuff. They get a better job. They go work on Wall Street. They, you know, they rise in the clownfish community. And then once they hit the top of the ladder, which would probably be like the most rich person, like the Bill Gates of clownfish, the Steve Jobs of clownfish. Once they reach that, once they reach that ring on the ladder, they start to turn into a woman. It's because women are so great. Once, once men are absolutely perfect and they've learned everything they can, they then become women. <laughs> Only one of the clownfish can become a woman. His entire body changes. He's going through another puberty. You know, things are changing, things are growing. Where did that come from? Type of stuff. And then he becomes a full blown female. He mates with like the male that's at the next little ring down from him because 
the other males aren't good enough yet. There's one mystery that paleontologists have been trying to figure out for the longest time, probably years, maybe as long as I've been alive, and it is, how does the stegosaurus mate? How did it mate? They can't figure it out. And this is because it's got like nothing but armor on its body. The Stegosaurus is that dinosaur that has like all of those big hard round plates on its back all the way down to its tail and it's like very spiky. So they know that it can't meet like a regular lizard where the male sits on top of the female on the back because like it can't sit up there dude. Their spikes would prohibit them from rolling over onto their backs and they're too big to stay on their sides for very long because if you think about it, like cows and horses and stuff, they kind of don't do very well on their sides and they're and, and laying down because their stomachs are weird and the weight of their bodies kind of crushes them. They cannot figure out how, how a stegosaurus mates. It's an age old question. I'm kind of curious about it too. How did they do this? Since like we've gone through all of these different animals that mate in different ways, maybe the stegosaurus like had a detachable penis that he would just fling at the female or you know, maybe he just sprayed the sperm at her and it just stuck somehow. I don't know. I feel like they're not being creative enough in the animal world anything is really possible that's all that i have i really like the story about the angler fish and then there's like everybody knows about praying mantises and spiders pretty much so i'm not gonna talk about those thank you so much for coming i enjoyed talking to you and ta-ta